If you don't know I'm a JoJo fan by now, either you're new here or you haven't exactly been paying attention. Through highs and lows, I love this series in the end, partially because it does exactly as advertised. Be an absolutely bizarre adventure. Beyond that though, there is some genuine depth to be seen throughout, sometimes, especially with a good amount of the characters. And considering that this entire list of characters is specifically ones that are from properties I had seen since September 2021 to now, well, I finally caught up on Jojolian. So let's talk about the protagonist and my favorite character from the part, Josuke Higashikata. I can't in good faith say that I was expecting much out of Josuke when I went into Jojolian. Not that I thought he would be bad or anything, but he was an amnesiac, a trope I have seen a million times by now, and has a design that I personally found less than remarkable. I don't know, I'm just not a big fan of the sailor suit when he himself never sails once, and also it would have been great to see more of his hair at least once. That aside, and returning to the amnesia, perhaps what made me most interested in Josuke is how his story can be seen as something of a deconstruction of this trope. Because Josuke's reason for wanting to find out about his past is entirely fueled by a sense of loneliness in a world where he knows no one, and wanting to better understand who he even is. From the moment he was found by Yasuho Hirose buried in the wall eyes of Morio, that was his goal. And oh boy, does Josuke pursue this goal with considerable ferocity. Early on, Josuke has no issue with torturing and threatening his enemies for any information he can squeeze out of them. Granted, Ojiro Sasame definitely deserved it, but I digress. He even sets out to interrogate members of his adopted family if they seem suspicious. And again, granted, they are suspicious, but Josuke jumps at any opportunity to learn about his past because he feels that it's all he has in a world where he feels like he can't trust anyone besides Yasuho. However, throughout the part, he learns that there are people he can trust. The patriarch of the Higashikitas, Norisuke IV, does have Josuke's best interests at heart, and later on, Josuke has little problem putting his trust in the plant appraiser Rai Mamizuku. This is one of Josuke's biggest personal problems early on, his lack of trust for anyone but Yasuho, so seeing him put trust in others later on is extremely satisfying. Speaking of Yasuho though, let's talk about her and Josuke's relationship. As I've been saying, Josuke put all of his faith in Yasuho early on when he thought he had nothing else, and in many ways, this makes sense. She was the first person that he ever saw the moment he woke up with no memories, and the second person he saw, Joshu Higashikata, tried to cave his head in with a rock. And in that moment, Yasuho tried to stop Joshu, and after that, she tried to help Josuke find out about his past. The two form a close friendship early on, and when they're separated for so long early on in the part, it's clear how much stress it puts on both of them. And the moment they finally reunite, Josuke is so elated to see her that he cries. He tries to cover it up, but he can't hide the tears. Despite his self-imposed loneliness, Josuke still cared for Yasuho immensely, seeing her as his anchor in an unfamiliar world. And that trust was well placed, with Josuke being unable to succeed in many fights if not for the trust he put in Yasuho, including the final fight of the part. I've been beating around the bush for far too long, though. Indeed, Josuke's past is eventually revealed to him, and the way he takes this news is what makes him so compelling. Early on, Josuke learns that he didn't simply lose his memories. It's more accurate to say that he's a new being, one created from the fusion of parts of two people, Josufumi Kujo and Yoshikage Kira. This does nothing to dampen his feelings of loneliness. If he's a new being, then there really isn't anyone looking for him. That's what he thinks anyways. This leaves Josuke with a subconscious choice for most of the part. Should he tether himself to his pasts, or accept his present and his existence as a unique person? Well, in a way, he does both. His goal eventually shifts to protecting Holy Kira, the mother of Yoshikage Kira, and healing her seemingly incurable disease no matter what it takes. Even still, he continues to contemplate how neither Kira nor Josefumi are of this world anymore, and while he was made from them, he isn't necessarily either of them. This is shown best in chapters 90 and 92, which together present some of my favorite scenes in the entire part. Chapter 90 shows Josuke questioning who he should consider himself, writing off Josuke Higashikta as a temporary name given to him by Norisuke, and mourning the fact that Josefumi's mother isn't even looking for him. However, he still decides to go through with his goal of reaching the head doctor in hopes of healing Holly, even though it may get him killed. Two chapters later, his gambit pays off and he ends up reunited with Holly, but he's in critical condition. When Holly recognizes him as her son Kira, though, she promptly helps him heal himself, even though she herself is on the verge of a coma. At that moment, Josuke comes to his decision. 
He is, indeed, Josuke Higashikata. The memories from both of his past lives have long since vanished, but even still, he is certain that Holly is someone that he cares for, that she is his mother. After several chapters of him dedicating his life to saving Holly for Kira and Josefumi's sake, this chapter sees him decide that he's going to save her for his own sake, thereby establishing once and for all who he is. The fact that the final frame of the part is him standing amongst his new family of the Higashikitas, showing his trust in them that he has forged and his confidence in who he is now, is a thing of beauty, and there couldn't have been a better end to the part. Except if Yasuho was at the table with them, like, come on, I know she isn't part of the family, but let her be part of it. 